In today's video, we're going to look at how to create these simple motion graphics in DaVinci Resolve to spice up your animation. So let's go ahead and uh, have a look. The first thing we're going to do here is to bring our Fusion Composition clip to the Fusion page. Let's bring in a background node, change the color, and then we're going to bring in a rectangle masking node connected to the background node. And then the first thing we're going to do here is to adjust the width as well as the height of the shape. Then let's also bring up a corner radius to round out the edges. Now let's go ahead and bring a duplicate node, which you can find under effect. We're going to place it after the background node. We're going to change copies to four. Then let's also change the angle parameter to 90. Then let's come back to the rectangle masking node. Let's bring up the Y axis of the center parameter. This, as you can see, is going to bring out these four lines and we're going to stop until we feel like it's the right fit for this look. Now let's uh, go ahead and make a copy of this rectangle masking node and then let's simply paste it. And then we're going to come to this second one and we're going to change the paint mode to multiply. This will ensure that only the overlap between the two shapes are going to show. Okay, so now let's keyframe the center parameter and then we're going to come to the 12th frame, keyframe again. Now let's move to the 24th frame, keyframe one more time. And then we're going to move the lines away from the center. And then uh, the one that's in the middle, I think we're good. Then let's come to the first one. We're going to bring it towards the center until it's completely gone. The next thing we're going to do is to open up the spline editor. What we're going to do is to edit the interpolations between all these keyframes. So now, as you can see, the animation looks pretty good, but we're still not done. So let's actually come back to the spline editor. What we're gonna do uh, here is to duplicate all these keyframes. But before we do that, let's actually create one more keyframe after that last keyframe. We're just going to create a, a little bit of a break between one animation and the next. So now let's simply select all these four keyframes and then let's right click in the menu, go to set loop and then select loop. So now as you can see, these uh, keyframes are now being repeated throughout uh, the rest of this video. So if we play this, uh, right now, you guys will see that this animation is going to keep going until the very end. We can also easily create another set of these lines by copy and pasting the background and duplicate node. And then let's uh, connect the rectangle masking node to the new background node and then connect this new uh, duplicate node back to the old one as a foreground. And now what we're going to do is come to the second uh, background node, the new background node here, change the color. We're going to come to the merge node. We're going to change the angle parameter to 45. So now, as you can see, this is going to give us another set of these lines at a different color. And if we were to play this right now, you guys can see that these lines will keep going. And also the best part about this is that if we were to extend the duration of the clip, the animation will keep going because of the loop that we just created earlier. So now let's come back to our workflow here. We're going to uh, actually bring in a uh, background node again. We're going to connect the merge node to the background node as a foreground. And then what we're going to do is in this new merge node, let's bring down the size of this. And then we're going to change the edge parameter to wrap. So now this is going to actually duplicate all these lines throughout the entire screen. Now let's remove the background node and we're going to bring in two transform nodes instead. Connect the merge node to both transform nodes and then connect those two together as a background and foreground. Now in this merge node, we're going to make sure we restore all these settings. And then we're going to come to one of the transform nodes and then we're going to adjust the size as well as the center parameter, place it somewhere on the screen, do the same thing for the other transform nodes. Now, as you guys can see, this is another quick way to create multiple sets of the same motion graphics throughout the entire video. For our second motion graphic, we're going to use shape nodes. All shape nodes start with S, which distinguish them from the rest of the nodes. So let's bring in S rectangle as well as S render. S render is needed in order for all the shape nodes to work. Now let's connect S render to media out one. And we're going to go back to the rectangle node, adjust width, height, as well as corner radius. Now let's go ahead and make a copy and paste the same rectangle node. And we're going to, in the second rectangle node, change the angle parameter to 90. Then let's bring in S transform and then place it after uh, the S merge node. 
And in this uh, transform node here, we're going to right click X size in the menu, select expression, and then connect it to Y size. And then we're going to bring down Y size. And we're also going to play with rotation uh, parameter as well uh, for our animation. So the next thing I want to show you guys is how easy it is to duplicate the shape. So let's bring in S grid node and then place it after S transform. And in the S grid node, we're going to bring up grid cells X and Y. We're also going to uh, play with the X offset as well as the Y offset. But you guys can see how easy it is to duplicate the shape. And uh, now let's come back to the S transform node. We're going to keyframe rotation parameter here. And then we're going to move to the 24th frame. We're going to type in 360. So now if we look at this animation, we now have this shape uh, complete a full circle. And now let's come to the spline editor. Let's change the interpolation uh, real quick. And then what we're going to do is to right click and then uh, in the menu, select uh, go to set loop, select loop. So this will duplicate these uh, two keyframes throughout the rest of the video. So you guys can see now this animation is being repeated throughout the entire clip and it's very easy to do so using shape notes. For our third motion graphic, we're going to bring a background note. We're going to first of all change the color then let's bring a B spline masking node and connect it to the background node. Now the great thing about the B spline masking node is that by default, the line is rounded, all the points are rounded. So when we draw out our line path on the screen like this, the line, as you can see, is automatically smooth. So now once this is done, we can just uh, change it to modify only. This will allow us change or modify the individual point uh, if needed. OK, now let's bring up the border width a little bit there. And then we're also going to bring down the length parameter, bring down the length to the point where we feel like it's the appropriate length for the line. And then we're going to primarily focus on the position setting here. So let's uh, set a keyframe. And then we're going to bring this position in order to bring the line out of the line path. We're going to change it to minus one. Now we're going to start to slowly bring it up until we find the point where the line is barely, barely hitting the line path. So I think that's perfect. Now let's move to 24th uh, frame and then we're going to keyframe the position setting again. But we're going to bring all the way up to one. But in order to make that blob at the end completely disappear, we're going to change it to 1.1. So now, as you guys can see, this is pretty much our line reveal. Now let's go to the spline editor for the B spline masking node, and we're going to check position, change the interpolation between the two keyframes, and then repeat these two frames uh, throughout the rest of the uh, clip, like how we did uh, before for the other two motion graphics. So this looks pretty good. Another thing we can do is to go to settings and then turn on motion blur to give us some additional texture uh, if that's what you're looking for, but we're going to ignore it for now. Okay, let's bring in a duplicate node. We're going to create uh, another line in our video here. So let's uh, primarily focus on center as well as the angle setting. We're going to create another line, which is going to uh, sort of go in the opposite direction here. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, and we can also adjust the time offset setting to create a little bit of a delay for the second line there. So that's going to make this animation a little bit more a little bit more interesting. Another way to quickly create a line path is to use mask paint. So let's bring mask paint node in and we're going to connect it to the background node. And then we're going to first of all change to the stroke type to polyline stroke. And then uh, we can start drawing the line path on the viewer. But the difference here right away is that you see the line is not smooth. So we will have to change it to modify only and then select all these individual points and then change them to smooth instead. So now we have a smooth line going on for us. Let's come to brush controls. Let's bring down softness, bring down the size as well. Let's go to stroke controls. We're going to primarily focus on the write on feature here. This write on parameter is going to allow us not only adjust the length of the line, but also where the line is going to be on the line path by simply dragging it uh, left and right. OK, so now let's uh, set a keyframe and then we're going to make sure end is at the beginning, at the start, and then come to the midway point, the 12th frame, bring out the end a little bit there. 
uh, to a point we felt where we feel like it's the appropriate length for the line and then drag the slider over to the right a little bit and then i come to the 24th uh frame there drag the slider all the way to the end make sure start is at the end so now if we look at our animation here guys we have a pretty smooth line animation going on and then uh, let's uh, go to the spline editor we're going to uh, basically just to repeat these keyframes throughout the rest of the clip uh, like how we did uh, before so this is basically it guys we can very quickly create these simple motion graphics in davinci resolve using just a couple notes in fusion so i hope this tutorial helps and as always i will see you next time